good morning to you. Good morning, Julia. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm sure you've been as frustrated as I've been with all the questioning we've seen of many of the key figures that we saw, we're not just making decisions uh, at number 10, but also giving those press conferences at number 10, uh, of course, where we've just been seeing the Prime Minister now, but during those periods when we were many of us locked in our homes um, and many very fearful as well, um, and justifying those policies. And so much of the questioning has been about very peripheral things. How did you feel about this? How do you feel about that? And very little focus on the facts, like, did eat out to help out? Did it actually lead to an increase in infections uh, and things like that? Um, what do you make, just, just your general big picture impression of the, the line of questioning and what we're actually learning from the COVID inquiry so far? Yeah, I, I personally think it's an absolute shambles, the, the COVID inquiry, Julia, because they've set the modules up. The first module was looking at how prepared we were. And now they've gone straight into looking at the decision making. But there's a bit of a gap, I think, in and when you got to remember now the COVID pandemic hit many countries across the world and they all did different things. So surely this, the next thing you should do before you start looking at the decision making is to identify where did the UK or England, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, et cetera, perform better or worse than some other countries. Mm -hmm. Then look at the decision making that those countries did and the UK did. And then you can start identifying what should we do in another kind of pandemic? So if you take deaths as an example, Julia, there's a lot of discussion around the, should we, should we have locked down two or three weeks earlier? Well, That Sweden seems to be the only real substantive discussion they're having. Yeah, nothing at all. It's just basically all about lockdowns. I've literally just come onto the show listening to Boris's questioning, and it's all now on the, the second wave. And did we lock down early enough? Was the country in enough lockdowns? It's all about, should we have had enough lockdowns? Well, if you start with the the kind of the data, as we just discussed, you look at Sweden and they didn't have a lockdown. And if you look at excess deaths over the course of the last two years, they're one of the lowest in Western Europe. And the point you just raised about Edo to help out, Boris is having a grilling this morning, pretty much the, the barrister Hugo Keith is implying that Edo to help out, out filled those cases in September 2020. But if you look at France, you look at Portugal, didn't have Edo to help out. They saw the rises in cases around the same time and Google data is quite interesting here, Julia. You can track mobile phones and see how much mobility was going on. In August 2020, when the UK had this eat out to help out, mobility in the UK was much lower than most of Western Europe. So they're not looking at the real facts. Um, this is the thing. I don't understand why this inquiry is supposed to be looking at how we handled the pandemic. Why they spend so much time asking about... I mean, they even asked you, Chris Beauty and Patrick Vance. I mean, shame on them for, for not saying, look at the data. They, you know, to, but did you, did you think that Eat Out to Help Out would actually cause a rise in, in cases? Well, yes, they both said. I mean, I would expect that it would. Well, I mean, and the, you know, A, I don't care, it's irrelevant what you thought and what you felt. And B, you don't need to even bother asking that question because we've got the stats here. They're official data. They're not what you think, are they, Jamie? They're not what I think because it fits our... It fits our analysis of this. They are the objective facts about the situation. And this is the thing I think we all find, anyone who's been paying attention the last years, we all find very frustrating, is they are so fixated on the... You, you, you can do something about a virus uh, idea, even though, of course, we'd been told in advance that you couldn't, you know, that you can stop a virus, that we're fighting this war. Lockdowns are the answer. That, that, that locking down sooner or longer or harder or deeper, whatever, will have made more of a difference. But they're having this argument, not just back in February, March 2020, not just in autumn 2020, not just in January 2021, not just in December 2020. I mean, it went on for so long. But they're having it even now when we have all the data in. We know what happened in this country and what happened in every other country. And it's not any more down to what counted as a COVID death, what didn't. The thing that matter is how many more people would have died given any policy than would have died otherwise? And we know the answer because of Sweden. So you mentioned, you know, they've got the lowest excess deaths of the last three years, among the lowest, certainly the lowest in Europe, lower than other Nordic countries. So everyone always says, oh, it's very different from Britain. No, lower than other Nordic countries as well. What did they do that we didn't do? Tell us that. Yeah, uh, well, Denmark was another one that was quite low in, in the Nordic countries as well. And, and I think what Sweden did is they just kind of followed the plan that they had in place before <laughs> the pandemic. Crazy. So they pretty much had a plan in place. They followed it to the letter. And, and there was probably less political influence in terms of what they were going to do. It. Mm. That was the big challenge in the UK. You had 
when he was devolved out, because the first lockdown, obviously, you remember, Julia, you had it pretty much being run from the UK, yeah. from the centre of Whitehall. But then Boris Johnson gave powers to Nicola Sturge and Mark Drakeford. And what you clearly saw there then, there was kind of a bidding up of let's bring in more measures. So we saw the WhatsApps, didn't we, that they brought masks in class in Scotland. So they said, well, we better do it in England because we didn't want to be seen to be outplayed by Scotland. So we didn't follow uh, a clear plan. And ultimately, it says so Sweden didn't have these formal lockdowns. It didn't scare people. There was a reduction in mobility. Obviously, people use a bit of common sense. There's a virus spreading around the world. But it was a marginal reduction in mobility in terms of people moving around compared to the UK. And then what you've got to look at then when we talk about things like excess deaths is the knock-on effect. People were told to stay home, protect the NHS. Yeah. People took that to literally don't bother the NHS. Record waiting lists, lots of misdiagnosis. So the fallout of this, Julia, will go on. And it comes back to what I've said. We've got much, much rich data across the world. We're not looking at it. And talking about what Boris Johnson thought or Dominic Cummins about, yes. about Matt Hancock isn't going to fix problems for the next time. So I think you're top there in terms of what you said, Julia. Let's look and learn from other countries. We've all had the same problem. Who did better? Who did worse? That's what the COVID inquiry should focus on. Not yeah. and, and why what and, who said and, and why that was the case. Because when people said to me, you know, well, look at these countries that didn't lock down, they you know they did badly. Well, no, look at Sweden. Um, well, look at look at Brazil, they say it did really badly. And I always say, well, look at Peru. Peru locked down incredibly early. Um, they locked down very strictly. There was a, there were about I think a month or two where you were not allowed out of your home with people of the opposite sex. I mean, women were allowed out on one day, men on the other day, literally to try and stop people uh, mixing. They, 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 and again, like you said, the Google data, there are, there are this objective data that tells us how much people were actually out and about. It was one of the severest, earliest, longest lockdowns in the world. They have among the very highest COVID deaths. And this suggests to us, doesn't it, some countries that do one policy, some countries do another policy, have completely different rates. We saw, didn't we? Western Europe got hit very early. Eastern Europe, absolutely fine. Eastern Europe got hit massively hard in the second wave. Um, the, the, there is an element where, you know, we like to think as human beings that we have all this control, that what we do will really impact things. But actually, as we'd actually been told by the medical experts early on, you can't really do much to control a virus. You could have a, you could have a three week, you know, lockdown where you just basically stop everybody getting ill at the same time and overwhelming the hospital so you can build up more hospital capacity, which is what we were told we were doing. That was a lie. Um, but you're not going to stop it. And Boris Johnson yesterday, he actually bemoaned at one point, but, you know, but we kept being hit by wave after wave. Well, of course you were, because if you lock down and people aren't mixing, when they come out, COVID is still there, they're going to get it. I mean... I'm not an epidemiologist and I'm not a statistician. How is it that I can understand that and understood that in 2020? And our sodding prime minister and chief scientific advisors and chief medical officers didn't. No, you're, you're totally spot on there, Julia. And, and the thing that's very interesting when you do look at the data, and I've written a few blogs on this, is that when we moved into this living with COVID phase, obviously they didn't just switch COVID off. The COVID virus is still out there. And what we saw was... We didn't have any new restrictions. We didn't have any further lockdowns. That the virus, okay, cases would go up for four to six weeks, and then they start coming down again. It was exactly the same pattern as when they were doing all of these measures of bringing in circuit breakers, bringing in lockdowns. So, so the counterfactual is, if we hadn't have done any of this and kind of followed Sweden's approach, would it all have been pretty much the same anyway? And then you've now got all the economic harm off the back of it. So. I think you're spot on there, Julia. And, and, and you, I think, one thing through the pandemic, you did look at the data, you know, the facts you're just talking about. That I they tried were to. Europe. I tried well, to make sense of it. <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, the facts you just said, yeah, Western Europe got it, then Eastern Europe got it. And, and we all just got it. Nobody's mentioning China and all this. Just look at China. They pretty much were locking people inside. They then realised they have to unlock. And what happened? The virus started spreading because all it does is pause the spread. Everybody's going to catch it in the yeah. end. And I think basically, Julia, the, the COVID inquiry needs to learn lessons mm. from other countries, not what did Boris Johnson yeah. think about another Indeed. politician. And we even had comparisons within the constituent nations of the United Kingdom as well, like on masks and things like that. Jamie, I want you to stay because I want to talk to you a bit more about this. Jamie Jenkins, he's a, uh, as I said, he, he's with the, well, he's an independent statistician now, but he used to be the head of health analysis at the Office for National Statistics. 